Oh, well, hello everyone, and thank you for tuning in to another edition of Market Minutes. My name is Justin Bowman, Regional Sales Manager here at Harvest ETFs covering the Toronto region. I'm also here with my colleague, James Learmonth, Senior Portfolio Manager of the Harvest Tech Achievers Growth and Income ETF. And today, James and I are gonna be talking about the technology sector, recent trends, uh, and how we're positioning the portfolio within HTA. So James, great to meet you, great to see you. First question, uh, what are some of the trends dominating the tech sector following earnings season? Sure, so I guess more, more broadly speaking, um, you know, obviously artificial intelligence has become a huge theme within the tech sector over the past year. But one of the things that we've liked about the tech sector for several years is that it's actually much more broad than that. So you, you do have bleeding edge themes like, uh, like artificial intelligence, like autonomous vehicles, but you've also got more mature themes like the growth in cloud-based infrastructure, uh, the internet of things, the digitalization of the consumer uh, that are continuing to, to drive growth more in the background now. Uh, and then of course, you've still got uh, other long-term themes like cybersecurity, which is still a huge area of investment for companies. Uh, and is really tied into all of these themes because you know, you've got um, much more connections uh, into the internet now, and that requires uh, an ever increasing amount of cybersecurity to protect those networks. No, absolutely, for sure. And so maybe just diving a bit deeper into some of these trends, let, maybe let's start off with artificial intelligence. Um, how has the narrative surrounding AI really changed so far in 2024? Yeah, so through through most of the past year, it really started off, you know, uh, these really huge companies like what we call cloud service providers like Microsoft, like Meta, and Google and, and Amazon through their AWS platform, uh, investing in massive data centers in order to support their own products uh, for artificial intelligence. That shifted a little bit towards some of the enterprises now starting to spend on, on building out their networks. But really the, the sort of new uh, shift that, that a lot of analysts are starting to talk about now is actually artificial intelligence on devices or, or what they call artificial intelligence at the edge. And so what that is, is taking those massive calculations, those massive uh, large language uh, LLM models and moving them from a data center and actually having the calculations performed on your device, like your phone or your car or your PC. And so that's kind of the next leg of growth uh, we think that's that's coming within that artificial intelligence theme. No, that's great. Maybe kind of staying on the AI theme, um, can you talk to us a bit more about generative AI and you know what are some of the influence that it's gonna have on the rest of the sector going forward? Yeah, so maybe I'll just take a step back and from an artificial intelligence perspective. So. Um, what we originally had was what we called machine learning. That was, that's was that been a big theme for, for a few years within the space. And what that is essentially is taking uh, statistical methods and really large data sets, and then building these mathematical models to perform a specific task uh, based on, on user input. And so they're great models, but they tended to take a little bit of, uh, of human interaction to kind of adjust the model and, and identify the correct parameters. Um, the next step of that is what we call deep learning. And so that's what uh, that uses what we call neural networks, which is an architecture that's really based on how the human brain works uh, in order to um, have the have a computer continuously fine tune those models. And so you can have a lot more parameters that go into these models and make them much more complex. So generative AI is, is a type of deep learning model where you take these massive data sets and train the models on them. Uh, and then they can use this data to go back and with user input, spit out some kind of, of, uh, of response to that. And so obviously we've seen the first kind of first few stages that we've seen for these generative models are things like chatbots and uh, co-pilots and, and, and that type of use case. Um, but as we go forward, I think we're just really scratching the surface now and you'll see these generative models being used for things like drug discovery, uh, for personalized medicine, uh, for uh, increasingly complex um, searches for, for identifying financial fraud and those types of things. Oh, it's all very exciting or interesting information. Um, so maybe just uh, keeping on that AI theme, but going a bit deeper into some of the inputs. So you know, obviously a key input into the development of these AI systems is uh, graphics processing units or GPUs. Okay. Um, how are GPUs maybe 
in favor superior to CPUs um, for a lot of these companies and, and how do GPUs maybe affect uh, some of the operating costs for these businesses that are developing these systems? Yeah, so uh, traditionally when you're talking about computing, you had CPU central processing units and so uh, the way the, a computer works to, to oversimplify it is you would have what they call a core. So each transact, each um, uh, each computation has to go through a single core. It can only go through uh, one computation at a time. So today's CPUs are a little bit more complex. We can have up to, I think it's up to 16 cores now in, on a CPU, which is great and, and computing has come a long way. How a GPU differs is that instead of just a small number of cores, it's got thousands. And so they're originally designed to do complex calculations like uh, complex computer graphics, high-end computer graphics. And what they found is actually this kind of architecture with these thousands of cores that can do uh, you know, thousands of computations all at once are very well suited to the types of complex calculations that are done in artificial intelligence uh, applications. And so uh, a lot of these, a lot of companies now that they are building in these artificial intelligence applications um, are realizing that their traditional CPU heavy data centers are not going to cut it anymore and they need to do uh, what's called accelerated computing. And so that becomes much more GPU intense. So there's a, now a large uh, flow of spending into building out that GPU infrastructure inside the data center. Mm -hmm. Um, maybe just to switch gears here to another one of our uh, themes within the sector, um, cybersecurity. Can you maybe touch on some of the latest developments within cybersecurity um, and maybe how we're playing that theme within the HTA portfolio? Yeah. Um, so I guess let me go back to, to the COVID times. Obviously, a lot of people suddenly had to go uh, begin working from home, working remotely. And so you had this huge proliferation of, of entrance points into networks. And so again, cybersecurity kind of came to the forefront in terms of how do you protect a network with all these new entry points. Um, and so we saw a ramp up in spending there. And then now as artificial intelligence gets layered on top of uh, of existing cybersecurity solutions, you're getting this whole new level of, of spending that's coming in in terms of first to develop these cybersecurity solutions, and then on top of that, uh, how to uh, use those applications to, to address threats to a network. Uh, within HTA, our, our one pure play cybersecurity holding that we have is called CrowdStrike. And there are really what's called the a cloud native cybersecurity place. So basically their application resides in the cloud and they have a number of different, uh, what they call data graphs for monitoring network activity and trying to identify threats before they get into the network and cause problems. Um, so, you know, I think a concern that comes up time and time again when you talk about the tech sector is valuations. Yeah. Um, as we stand here today in March, uh, <laughs> what are your thoughts on valuations more broadly in the tech sector? Do you find they are justified, um, you know, in this high interest rate environment or are they a bit stretched? Um, they're certainly stretched from what we've seen over the past few years. Uh, however, I think the growth, we've kind of entered into a new paradigm of, in terms of growth for the sector as well. Um, so yes, it probably is a little more rich than we've seen over the past decade or so, but we're a long ways from the types of valuations that we saw in the late 90s prior to the, to the tech bubble. Um, and so, you know, with the kind of growth we're seeing, I think there's still runway for, for tech to continue to perform well. And maybe, so last question for you, James, maybe just relating it back to HTA, uh, what are some of the benefits of a covered call strategy specifically for a, um, you know, high growth sector such as technology? Sure, I, I think it really comes down to that balance. There, There is certainly a contingent of investors who need their portfolio to generate consistent and predictable cash flows for them. Uh, at the same time, they may want to be uh, invested in an area like technology, which traditionally, has not been known for for its income generation. That's changed a little bit over the over the past decade or so. We're seeing more companies paying dividends and consistently growing their dividends. Um, but still, relative to other areas, you know, not not at the same level in, of income generation. And so, a covered call strategy can give an investor who's looking for predictable cash flows that that um, vehicle 
to participate in the growth from a tax sector while potentially foregoing some upside in exchange for a predictable stream of cash flows. No, that's awesome. Well, thank you, James. I really appreciate your time. It was a great discussion and uh, I really appreciate your insights. My pleasure. Um, so as we discussed, uh, there are a number of themes within the technology sector that are going to have material impacts on a variety of different sectors going forward. Um, and we think this is a great opportunity for investors to gain some growth within their portfolio within the technology sector. Uh, here at Harvest ETFs, we strongly believe that a great way of gain, gain, gaining exposure to the tech sector is through an equal weight of large cap stocks um, with a covered call overlay to monetize volatility. We think that this will uh, create a strong stream of cash flow for clients that's very tax efficient and also allow them to participate on upside growth. So with that, I want to thank you for your time and hope you have a great day.